Hello, space friends. I'm CGB Gart, captain of the Friendship, and you're watching 07, the EVE Online show. Tonight, we'll fit deadly ships with CGB Rice on Does It Fit? We'll find out which alliances made it through the random draw for Alliance Tournament 13, and CGB Fossey and CGB Larrikin are going to join us on set to talk about some things that are coming to EVE. Then, we will find out who wins the rematch of BTEC R, Manny or Lash. Everybody's excited about that. And uh, at the end of the show, we're going to go and uh, pick a fight in Sucerento. So we're going on to Tranquility Live to see if any of you can uh, kill us for sweet skin prices. That's Sucerento. It's a low sex system right next to Tama in the Citadel. So start making your way down there, and we'll see you later. Uh, but first, let's take a look at this. Einherji. What is this? Is it? So just say the word? Yes. Okay. Einherji. Einherji. Yeah. Einherji. Einherji. Fyrbolg. 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 Jackdaw. 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 Welcome back. Now we know how to say it. Now we do, indeed. Okay. And just before we get into the current affairs, we just wanted to announce that EveOnline.com has just had a facelift. So if you haven't seen it, then definitely check it out. Beautiful page to show to your friends for a beautiful game. Indeed. But uh, yeah, it's not the only uh, new thing. I just changed my uh, desktop on my uh, work computer. Okay. Yeah, there's a wallpaper made by a Silent as the Grave. It's a character name. And, uh, That's rather ominous. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty ominous, but uh, the wallpapers they're uh, full of uh, brightness and the beautiful, beautiful colors, and uh, I really just like it when players take you know some of our uh, beautiful chips and and put a, a colorful, happy spin to them like this. So uh, my work computer looks really beautiful now. It is. Okay, yeah. definitely not ominous. And talking about player creations and player art, I just wanted to give it a shout out to all the winners from the customer support art competition that just got announced in a dev blog, and they were. A bunch of absolutely amazing art pieces that got yeah. submitted and we as you can see they're showing on your screen there were so many I luckily got to see all the submissions today mm -hmm. which were really really fantastic so thank you so much to everybody who submitted them and please keep your art coming to share at eveonline.com because we really love seeing what you guys create yeah there's plenty of walls here at CCP and I, I just I think it's a wonderful idea and I look forward to having this up for years to come Exactly. And one more creation that we want to talk about is, yeah. of course, if you haven't checked it out, is Zach's um, Shall It Begin yeah. YouTube video. Beautiful. Which, unfortunately, we have to show this silently because <laughs> it has some really epic, amazing music to it, but it is copyrighted. So if you are sending us something that you've created, please be sure to follow everybody's copyright <laughs> rules because they are some amazing things out there and definitely yeah. check this out because yeah. it's worth it. It's a wonderful mood piece. It gave me a goosebumps bigger than myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a good video. It's a good <laughs> video. But uh, so E-Valkyrie, uh, you've heard about E-Valkyrie, our dogfighting a virtual reality shooter uh, coming on the Oculus Rift and the Morpheus. It is now in pre-alpha. Uh, some of you may have known this, some of you are already in. Uh, a limited number of people have uh, actually downloaded the client. It was a pretty cool moment when we allowed people to download it to their homes for the first time uh, and uh, play it on their own DK2s. Uh, and was, uh, yeah, but, so keep those, uh, keep those applications coming. There's going to be room for more people, more and more people, and eventually we'll be all be playing Valkyrie. So. 
Exactly. And talking about signing up for things that involve fighting, we just wanted to let you know that the beginning of next week, the Sov Games, War Games are going to be starting on the Duality Test Server mm -hmm. to showcase and test out everything that's coming in next release, which yeah. is Aegis, ES, IS, however you want to pronounce it. And just to let you know, if your alliance hasn't signed up yet, then join the Spectre Fleet in-game channel because they are going to be there and they're taking anyone who wants to participate. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's going to be fun. So check it out on Duality. Exactly. Uh, but speaking of uh, fights and conquest, we like tournaments. And uh, like we, we said, Alliance Tournament Random Draw uh, results will be announced later on the show. But we also like player tournaments. We've had the Syndicate Competitive League. Now we have an ongoing one, uh, the EVENT Collides. Uh, and we have a new one to announce. Uh, that's Oceanic Assault. And as you uh, could guess from the name, uh, it's born out of Australia. Uh, and uh, who better to tell us about it than the organizer himself, uh, Chimera. Let's hear what he has to say about it. Oceanic Assault is a single elimination one versus one tournament that uses the EVE Online dueling system. Uh, each competitor can choose a standard T1 cruiser uh, and a T1 or T2 fitting of their choice. Um, so they go through the tournament brackets uh, fighting each other until there's only one ship left. Uh, entry is free, it's open to all pilots, um, but the only thing to remember is that all of the matches are scheduled uh, in the four hours before and after downtime. So we've built a custom tournament management system from the ground up to support us setting an ambitious limit of 256 competitors, um, which is pretty massive. Like you don't, you haven't really seen that in um, even some of, some of the larger tournaments that involve, that involve teams and uh, and stuff like that. Um, once you sign up, um, you'll get uh, notifications letting you know when your matches are. Fighting begins uh, on the 1st of July and will continue until the 8th of August. Uh, which is when we hold the finals, and the finals will be broadcast live on Twitch from the Oceanic Assault Studio in Western Australia. Well, uh, we've been working hard to secure sponsorships and have already secured commitments from uh, CCP. Uh, we've also been talking to EveBet, who are going to supply prizes in the form of ISK uh, and giveaways. And thanks to Eve Down Under, the highest strength pilot who also attends uh, Eve Down Under will gain automatic entry into the Eve Down Under 1v1 tournament in Sydney, Australia this year. So we look forward to Oceanic Assault, their website just opened today in preparation for this announcement. So uh, go sign up. Definitely. Yeah. But uh, E-Vegas is going to happen later this year, as you all know. People are buying tickets like crazy and uh, it's going to be a huge record turnout and people are going to have a lot of fun. And uh, the cool thing that's happening now, we announced that we're going to be giving out prizes to existing ticket holders. So the sooner you buy your tickets, the more uh, your, your odds are better of winning uh, things like these cool suites and also limo rides and all kinds of things. I've been and partied in some of these suites and they're, they're amazing. Um, so when the hotel gives us more and more stuff, the more people we bring to Vegas. And instead of just keeping it uh, all for ourselves and hiding away in, a, in some suite, we uh, give it to the people. So Sharing the love. That's what we do. Yeah. So the earlier you buy your tickets, the better the odds you have of uh, winning suites. You do. And of course, talking about player gatherings, now we're going to launch into our little spiel about player run player gatherings, yeah. as we always do. And first off, I suppose on the 4th of July is, of course, the Glasgow meetup. Mm -hmm. And I believe they've had a change of venue. So if you are planning to go, which is, of course, going to be attended by CCP Lilu and CCP Logibro, a couple of CSM mm -hmm. members, and, of course, all you wonderful players, then yeah. definitely check out the forum posts and their details to make sure that you turn up to the right place, because yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you go there and you uh, manage to find out what they're saying, please tell me, because I, <laughs> I, 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 know, I can never get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of good ones happening. Uh, there's two in France that we'd like to talk about. Uh, there's one happening in Toulouse, uh, which is on Eve Meet. So go to Eve Meet uh, and sign up, check it out. And there's another one taking place in Paris on July 11th, a player run one that supposedly is supposed to be pretty big. And they designed this beautiful poster for it. And uh, so go check that out. More information on the forums. and. Uh, it is. But of course, while we're talking about Europe, we can't miss out on the CCP Euro Tour, yep. which is something we hinted at last time, but yeah. God is, of course, super excited about it. So please tell us more. 
So this is it. Uh, we're going to start in uh, Eve and at Eve and T in, in Nottingham. Then we're going to go to Paris. Then we're going to go to Berlin, and we're going to end up in uh, Amsterdam for Amsterdam. And of course, like we said on the last show, we have these like weekends next to each other and a week in between, and we just didn't feel like going home. So why not like go to two capital cities that are packed packed with Eve players and just have fun with you guys. So keep. Uh, tuned for details on venues and, and more. I think soon. it's going to be a lot it's of gonna fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And of course, that's not the last one that you're going to, or, well, not even the <laughs> second last one that yeah, we're going to yeah. mention on this show, because of course, then in August is Eve New England, yes. which I believe CCP Rise and CCP Guard are going to have lots of fun. They've been practicing their camping skills, yeah, as yeah. you can see. And like at this point, we're pretty confident <laughs> we're going to survive uh, this this weekend yeah, of fun. We'll see. It's on a farm. There's a party barn. I yeah. think it's going to be an it, awesome. It's going to be intense, but we can't wait. And we hope you check it out. And uh, tickets are on sale at EveNewEngland.com. And then, of course, at the end of the year, from the 27th to the 29th of November, is Eve Down Under. And we're very pleased to say again that not just CCP Guard and myself and CCP Cognac, but now also CCP Puck will be joining us down in Sydney. And it's going Yay. to be awesome fun. Four devs. And I believe that they've started a raffle. Yeah, they've started the raffle, so they have uh, shipskin uh, tickets for early ticket buyers. So if you get your ticket, you get a, a ticket, and you can win uh, you can win all kinds of skins. But uh, if you're lucky, you'll win a Quave Dominic skin, which is worth a lot of money. There's a yes. few of those in the mix. So if you're going, why not get your ticket early and uh, get a get a cool skin out of it? Exactly. And just before we end this section, I want to give a shout out to Operation Magic School Bus, uh, School Bus, <laughs> excuse me, which has been spearheaded by CSM member Mike Azariah. And what it is, is giving out fitted ships to noobs in starter systems yeah. and career systems. Yeah. So if you are a new player and you want some help or some hints or anything else or mm -hmm. just to join up with a whole bunch of other new players then join the operation school bus mailing list in game and they'll get in touch and sort that out for mm -hmm. you and if you're an older player and run into new players point them that way it's exactly a good place to be. or join in and help them out yeah but uh to learn more about what's been happening in uh, zero zero and the power politics of eve and the lead up to the new soft system and a look at who's been Killing and who's been losing uh, the biggest, baddest ships in EVE Online. Yes. Here's the uh, 07 report by Hendrik Talladar. Hello there, space friends. Hendrik Talladar here with another report for the 07 show. The past few weeks have been fairly busy with fights throughout New Eden, despite the lack of SOV changes as of late, since most of EVE Online's nullsec groups have been patiently waiting for the upcoming SOV revamp, lovingly dubbed Fozzy SOV. In the northeast, Vanguard Coalition and Geminic Coalition continued their fighting over the regions of Ethereum Reach, Oasa, Calavella Expanse, and the other regions in the immediate area. As reported on the last episode, Nulli Secunda had been assisting the Geminic Coalition in defense of these regions under a contract. Nearby in the Cash region, Pandemic Legion have shown up in the northeast occasionally to join in the fights, but they are not part of any official contract to defend the regions. To the southwest, the Imperium, formerly known as the CFC, lost a large number of super capitals when they tried to move them out of the Fountain region. Black Legion and Fountain Corps, a term for the group of players that reside within the NPC systems within the region, were responsible for the attack. The Imperium suffered approximately 350 billion Iskan losses due to their convoy being hit by hostile entities. In Quarius, Darkness and some of their allies tried to carve out space for themselves in the aftermath of the collapse of the N3 Coalition and the departure of the Northern Coalition from the Southwest. In turn, their enemies who have been fighting them over the past few months did their best to stifle any progress being made, and the likes of the Elite Space Coalition, a group comprised of the Confederation of XX Pizza XX, Eon Alliance, and Vox Populi, took systems in the neighboring Delve region to help with the assault. These attempts to prevent Darkness from taking all of Quarius saw hundreds of billions of Isk destroyed in one of the more content-filled regions within the game. In the south, the remnants of the N3 Coalition have been pushed back as various groups quickly took advantage of the weak power block's influence on the regions. This saw numerous different alliances claim and fight over systems while staking their own claims. For those interested in wormholes, the system of J150020, also known as Polaris, the former home of the notable wormhole group No Holes Barred, saw itself contested over. A loosely put together group calling itself the Coalition of Free Wormhole Corporations invaded the system that at the time belonged to Quantum Explosion. QEX were joined by their allies, Hard Knock Citizens and Laserhawks, to help stave off the initial attack, securing control of the system. Shortly thereafter, the Coalition of Free Wormhole Corporations attacked the system again, and again were forced off the battlefield, taking more losses than they inflicted. 
After the second battle, the ad hoc campaign to take the system fizzled out, with the offensive side opting to no longer try and capture the system, but stated perhaps down the line they'll regroup and try once more. As we wrap up this report, let's take a look at some of the big kill mails that occurred over the past few weeks. Two Goon Swarm Federation Erebus class titans were destroyed in the Fountain region of KBN-36. These losses were both due to Black Legion and Fountain Corps attacking the Imperium. The titans were valued at 112 billion ISK and 129 billion ISK respectively. A third Erebus Titan was destroyed the same day, but in the Austin Gale system located in Placid. The 108 billion ISK ship belonged to the Bastard Cartel and was destroyed by Shadow Cartel and some of their allies. The fourth Erebus Titan was destroyed a few days later in the 4-07MU system of Catch when a Kadeshi Compo was attacked by Pandemic Legion and the Imperium. This resulted not only in the 117 billion ISK ship being destroyed, but a collection of other capital ships as well. Dangerous Voltage lost the Leviathan-class Titan in the query system of GOP-GE to the Confederation of XX Pizza XX. The value of the ship was estimated at 113 billion ISK. Loseshnia Sholopin destroyed a fifth Erebus Titan belonging to an unaffiliated alliance in the Iridia system of Marmeja, which earned them 104 billion ISK kill mail for their efforts. A little over a week later, the same group, along with some of their allies, then destroyed another Erebus-class Titan in the Oregon system also located in Iridia. The unaffiliated Titan cost around 129 billion ISK. Confederation of XX Pizza XX and their allies were then responsible for the destruction of an unaffiliated Avatar-class Titan that cost 109 billion ISK in the Dell system of 1-2J4P. In the Northeast, Triumvirate suffered 108 billion ISK loss when their Ragnarok belonging to them was destroyed by Mercenary Coalition and their allies in the system of QRF-BH located within the Spire region. 109 billion ISK Leviathan belonging to Imperium Member Alliance Space Monkeys Alliance was destroyed in the Ardoron system located within the Placid region thanks to Snuffed Out. And finally, it's worth mentioning that the fourth ever Revenant was destroyed recently. The rare pirate faction Super Capital was destroyed in the Declan region of JU-0WQ and was valued at 104 billion ISK. However, the story doesn't end there. Although the Killmail states that the pilot was a member of Mordu's Angels, the player controlling it was in fact a member of the Imperium and using an alternate character that was able to socially engineer their way into being a member of the Mordu's Angels Alliance. Part of the reasoning was due to the Imperium and Mordu's Angels having some bad blood with one another and also as a way to mess with Mordu's Angels kill board, which they hold in high regard. In the end, this was part of a community event hosted by the Imperium as part of a celebration for the recent antics in the southern parts of EVE. That's all the big events that have occurred in EVE over the past several weeks. I'm Hedrick Talendar, and this has been the 07 Report. That was the 07 Report. Welcome back to the set. Fitting ships has always been uh, one of my favorite activities in EVE, which is good because it takes me a lot longer to fit a ship than to lose it. So. To get us some expert help on, on fitting a really cool ship, uh, we brought in CCB Rice, uh, and he's going to tell us uh, how to fit a really cool ship on Does It Fit? Welcome to Does It Fit with CCB Rice, where we cook up the most delicious fits in the universe. Yum, yum. <laughs> so uh, tell us what do you have for us today? All right, so last time around we did Suetonia's cheap Kestrel fit for mm -hmm. low skill point pilots. Mm -hmm. So I thought this time we go all the way in the other direction, pick up something pretty uh, skill point intensive, okay. a little more expensive, and uh, kind of expert type of ship. So we're going to do a Typhoon. Um, it's going to oh. be uh, kind of inspired by Big Miker, who's been making a lot of really awesome uh, PvP video stuff lately, yeah, and yeah. kind of a small gang uh, expert, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, the Typhoon is a scary ship. Definitely. So let's uh, check it out. Let's check it out. First thing, let's have a look at what the Typhoon actually does. We have a bonus to uh, missile launcher rate of fire, uh -huh. and then a bonus to uh, cruise and torpedo explosion velocity, which we're going to kind of ignore here because we're going to go with rapid heavy missiles. Yeah, yeah. Um, which get a big damage bonus, and they match up really well to meta right now. They're good at shooting small ships, um, which we're going to see a lot of cruisers, frigates, destroyers. Um, we want to be able to kill speeples, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, these work out really well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with that. Um, last high slot, we'll finish up with a heavy newt. Okay. Give us a little bit of extra utility there. Uh-huh. And then as we go down to the mids, we're going to do dual prop, which is another cool option. Typhoon has yeah. so many mids um, that you, you have a lot of room to do. You really want these five mids on kind of big micro-style battleships. Mm -hmm. Getting all five mids is really good. So we can do a micro-warp drive, a large micro-jump drive, so we can okay. move around wherever we want. A cap booster, so that we have resilience against newts, and also so that we never, don't run out of cap while we're burning around with the micro-warp drive. Mm-hmm and then uh, standard tackle point and web. Of course. So uh, this looks like it can really zoom around the battlefield mm -hmm. and uh, when it gets in close, make sure nobody gets away. That's right. Controlling the engagement. 
All right, so then we get to Lowe's. We are going to run an armor tank here. Uh -huh. It's going to kind of be based around a large ancillary rep. And then after that, we're going to have a light uh, bit of added resistance from uh, an energized adaptive nano and a reactive armor hardener. Okay. And finally, a damage control, which you should pretty much always have. Okay. So that's kind of our light armor tank. And then yeah. we'll follow that up with a couple ballistic control systems and a nano fiber for some added speed. Okay, awesome. So this is definitely not the type of tank you want to get into an extended brawl with. Right. It's more like uh, to give you a little bit of buffer while you rearrange and get out of there. That's exactly yeah. right. So, and then finally, we're going to move on to rigs. We have hyperspatial velocity optimizers, which are rigs that increase your warp speed, which is really good for battleships. Yeah. Um, they're a little slow in warp, and so this is going to increase your travel time. It's also mm -hmm. going to increase your time uh, moving around within systems when you're trying to kind of outsmart your opponents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to grab a couple of those. And finally, one uh, Tech 2 polycarbon to get us even more speed okay. and added agility. So this is all about the speed and the, the moving around. Yeah, this is all about uh, kiting. Uh, you want to be part of, you can do it by yourself, especially yeah. if you have a lot of invested uh, money into it through implants mm -hmm. and links and things like that. Mm -hmm. It really capitalizes on those things well. Yeah. Um, but even in just a small, a small group where you have a couple little ships to deflect support for you, tacklers, stuff like that, uh -huh. you're just going to use this to burn around the field, supply DPS, no matter where you're at, and you have a lot of utility as well. Awesome. And, and you can make uh, more expensive versions of the ship if you want to burn that kind of money. Absolutely. Upgrading tons of the mods on, on this ship works out really well for you. Things like the point and web, um, the tank, uh, the ballistic controls if you want. And then if you really want to step up how much you're investing, you definitely yeah. start upgrading from the Typhoon to other ships. This, this basic fitting methodology uh -huh. works really well on a bunch of things. The Bar Guest, for instance, you can basically directly port this fit yeah. to, yeah. Um, and it's just going to go faster. It's going to give you the added point range, all yeah. kinds of yeah. other cool things. It's pretty scary to have a big, durable uh, ship that has a lot of DPS like this moving around like, mm -hmm. you know. Like it wants. It's pretty Absolutely. scary stuff. We uh, have a couple little pieces left over. Okay. We have a big drone bay on the Typhoon, mm -hmm. um, but it's really good to keep a lot of light drones. Like I said, you want to be able to fend off those frigs and destroyers. Yeah. So grabbing 10 or 15 light drones is totally good. Um, we have lots of room for them, and then at least one flight of mediums in case you're fighting something a little heavier like a battle cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't waste your whole drone bay on heavies, for instance. No. Because they can't keep up. Exactly. Yeah. You'll just end up outrunning them yourself. Yeah. And then grab charges for everything else. We have paste for the ancillary rep. We have uh, Kaldari Navy missiles for the heavy missile launchers, yeah. which I don't have enough of to actually fill, but whatever. And of course, uh, Navy Cap Booster 800s for the Cap Booster, which I don't yeah. have in here. But. Yeah. yeah. And this uh, uh, affordable implant, you've put one in to uh, have the fit. Yeah, I thought uh, I needed this, but it looks like it does fit anyway. Yeah, yeah. But so it's, a, it's, our, it's our if you run into a little work. trouble, that's a that's a yeah. cheap way to get around that. Absolutely. It is yeah. a little tight on CPU, and yeah, it's easy to yeah. grab an implant or two to yeah. make it all squeeze exactly. in. So how much would this go for? So actually, with insurance, Typhoon's not crazy expensive. Uh, the total build cost is probably around 250 mil, but um, with insurance, it probably only ends up running you about 100 to lose one of these. Okay. But I do recommend you know, grabbing some snakes and some links and some other things to supplement, yeah. which of course makes the price go up quite a bit. So yeah, yeah. Kind of to taste yeah. is what yeah. the price is at, I'd say. Uh, that's very cool. So uh, we, should, we should take this out for a spin. Absolutely. Yeah. These are going to do well. I can't wait to see uh, CCP Bedek uh, <laughs> in Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to try it out. So uh, are you going to go out and get some kills with this? If you get a good kill, uh, tweet us with the uh, EVE07 hashtag. If you have ways to improve this, uh, let us know on Twitter. And, uh, For and, sure. Yeah. And if you want to see some of this in action, I recommend go checking out uh, Big Micro's Ferocious series. You can see a whole bunch of different ships flown in this style, and it's pretty awesome stuff. All right. So thanks for coming. And it's out. Exciting. And it did fit. So we'll see you back on the show. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope we see a lot of typhoons in space uh, soon. But uh, we just got a live request to give a shout out to a player meet that's happening in Cologne, Germany on June 20th. Go to the forums or even meet to find out more about that. Uh, but with me here are uh, two of our game designers, CCB Fossey and CCB Larrikin. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank really you. glad to be here. Yeah. This is uh, this is. Larrikin, this is your first time on, mm -hmm. uh, on, on 07 doing an interview. Yeah, it's first time doing an interview. Yeah. Uh, I'm very nervous at the moment. My, yeah. my palms are a little bit sweaty. <laughs> uh, so, but You'll I'm... be fine. We'll take good care of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank everyone, you. everyone in Twitch chat is always really friendly. They mm -hmm. are. In fact, I asked my mum to watch tonight because I'm going to be on TV. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I asked her not to watch because I remembered Twitch chat. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, exactly, yeah. so, you mm -hmm. know, there's always pros and cons. Yeah, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Fossey, tell me, uh, 
this is obviously a very busy summer for you. What have you mm -hmm. been up to lately? Oh, yeah, we've been up to a bunch of things. Uh, of course, this is the uh, summer of Sov, and July coming up is going to be really the, the middle, the epicenter of this summer of Sov. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up there. There's going to be another dev blog, a couple more dev blogs actually coming up before those release with more information. We've got the uh -huh. duality play tests. But today, we thought we'd talk a little bit about some other stuff that's coming out uh -huh. in July, some balance changes. Okay, balance changes. Mm -hmm. So what is the first thing you want to go into Regarding yeah. that, so I mean, balance is is a uh, a very um, incremental uh, mm -hmm. process yeah. to get it right. We want to make sure we're uh, taking steps, watching the results, taking steps, watching the, the results. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that uh, that we've been working on for quite a while, and we're going to continue working on, is the Ishtar. Yeah. And so there's going to be more details about that coming out in the next uh, probably week or so. Mm -hmm. But we are making another pretty significant change to the Ishtar in uh, our Aegis release in July. Okay. So uh, people can look forward to that. Uh, Mr. Larkin and Rise and I have been uh, working on that, and we've been looking at the results of our changes in the last two releases, mm -hmm. uh, which have had positive changes, yeah. but uh, there's more that needs to be done, and then we're yeah. going to continue making those changes. Yeah. Yeah. Last time, uh, when CCP Rise was on the 07 Shield talking about mm -hmm. history rebalancing, he had the nerve pad slung yes. around his shoulder. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so. The Nerf pad is currently sitting up at my desk, uh, <laughs> ready for uh, the next swing. Okay, <laughs> interesting, interesting. So uh, people stay tuned for that when that's ready uh, sometime next week. Yeah, but yeah, yeah we're happy to be able to say that we're continuing to work on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Missiles are fun. They are fun. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, some of the Sharp Pro players out there have seen a few changes that we're, we're thinking about making on CC. Yeah. Uh, we're going to introduce missile guidance computers and enhancers and the scripts for those as well. Awesome. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a really cool change. It gives players lots of interesting fitting choices. And, yep. uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to flying some missile boats out there and yeah. uh, dispensing some space missile violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More versatility and options for missile lovers. Yes. yes and, uh, and on top of that, because, you know, that's just not enough, we're also going to buff heavy missile damage by around about 5%. Okay, that's so, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, it's a, we think it's going to add up. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it's going to be some, uh, some nice changes for some, uh, some of the ships that rely on those. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And that isn't even all for missiles, is it? Yeah. Uh, no, we've got more coming up yet, but we're keeping a couple up their sleeve there, so... Mm -hmm. So lots of changes to missiles. Missiles are amazing. They uh, used to be my uh, choice back in the day before mm -hmm. I discovered everything else. Uh, I started out with missiles. Yeah. I started as a Kildare character yeah. as well. So a did lot I. Of people, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. So <laughs> yeah. Missile Ravens for, for life. Yep. They always mm -hmm. have a place in my heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. So. I, I miss my uh, heavy missile Ferox from yeah. before the Drake was even released. Oh. That was the best mission oh. ship. That was a good ship. That was a good ship. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah. The new ship. There's a new ship coming in the uh, HS release, which is coming there in is July. There is indeed. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be releasing the fourth and last of the Tech 3 destroyers mm -hmm. in Aegis. Uh, yeah. It's the Hecate, which is the Glente Tech 3 destroyer. Yeah. It's a really exciting ship. Uh, it has both armor and hull tanking bonuses. Yeah. Uh, it's a powerful hybrid uh, ship. There we got it up on the screen it's here. It's a beautiful It's a gorgeous ship. ship. Yeah, flying beautiful. wing design. Uh, oh. It's going to be able to hit really hard at long range. Great for both solo fighting and uh, fleet fighting with blasters and rail. Uh, the transitions, you're seeing them there, the animations as it uh, moves from it looks like uh, that's from propulsion mode to sharpshooter mode. Uh, and uh, that is uh, currently, we're finalizing a lot of the designs for that now, uh -huh. and uh, it'll be up on Sissy for people to play with very soon. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and it is, I'm really excited about that ship. I think cool. people are going to have a lot of fun with it. It's going to yeah. have cool modes to switch between. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. It looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's one of my favorite designs we've done in quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's Absolutely. beautiful. It has that like, mm -hmm. it has that kind of like art deco retro feel to yeah. it. It's the beautiful. Yeah. The yeah. Algos does yeah. so well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how that's going to look with skins in the future too, yeah because it's yeah. gonna be a great platform yeah and it has that, like yeah. it has a, a lot canvas. of surface area to kind yeah. of like you know to get the skin on mm -hmm. yeah yeah we're also making another big set of changes in um, Aegis we're going to be doing a set of balance changes for 
combat battle cruisers. So both the basic ah. Tech One combat battle cruisers and the uh, Navy faction ones. Uh, there's going to be more, more details of that revealed uh, in the coming weeks, but uh, look forward to that, and we think people are going to be very excited about it. It's something that, uh, uh, a ship class that is a lot of fun to fly, yeah. uh, and we really uh, think that we can uh, make it even more exciting to fly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, that's a really popular ship class. A lot of yes. people mm -hmm. fly those. Uh, and so people don't have to wait long for those coming in July, and information coming even sooner. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's good stuff. But we're not through the change list yet. So no, we have not. some we have some pretty interesting changes coming up yeah, that uh, Larry yeah. is going to tell us about, right? So we have a, a fairly big one, which is we're changing the way Fleet Walk works a little bit. Okay. So we're going to restrict um, what Fleet Commanders, Wing Commanders and SWAT Commanders can warp their, their members to. And um, the short of it is uh, if your members couldn't warp there by themselves, you can't Fleet Warp. Okay. Your, your members do that. Okay. So that's going to restrict our bookmarks, our probe results, uh, mission locations, and some dead space items. Uh, yeah. But on the whole, that's it. So. so you'll still be able to fleet warp to gates and planets and the okay. sun. Other members, other, other members, members of your fleet. Of your fleet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, obviously, taking away some choices, uh, what is the kind of goal of these? Of these changes, well, look, the big goal is that we want to we want fleet combat to be more involved. We really want players to be able to shine and um, show off their skills, mm -hmm. and we think this change gives uh, gives a bigger opportunity for specialised fleet members who specialise in tackling, probing, uh, you know, cloaky movement around the grid, setting okay. up warp locations. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and and mm -hmm. scouts can really um, really enhance fleet combat as a whole. And you know, you'll have to do a little bit more. Then just sort of nod off while the uh, FC tells you what to F1. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it, just no sleeping while the fleet is warping around. No sleeping for yeah. you. <laughs> it also <laughs> means that um, warping on top of uh, another fleet for bombers or to land your brawlers on top of a sniping fleet uh -huh. is going to require you to send a ship there first to warp to instead of just fleet warping the whole fleet. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Results. yeah. So I think that's going to make a pretty significant incremental change to the yeah. way fleet combat yeah. works. Yeah. Going to reward people who put the little extra, extra mm -hmm. into it, yeah. And this is uh, it's really a continuation of the work we've been doing uh, for quite a while. When we made the changes to um, Drone Assist, it was the same idea. We want to make sure that fleet combat is something that uh, every member feels valuable in. Uh, yeah. And so we're doing that bit by bit. This may not be the final change we make to fleet warps. We might do more in the future. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's other changes that we'd like to make in the future as well that uh, allows you to, or encourages you to fly your own ship more and rely less on other people flying it for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But this is a process we're going to keep working on. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be part of something big and powerful, something mm -hmm. bigger than yourself, but it's also fun to have to do something individual yeah. inside you that. Want, you, you want to sort of know that when you're Fleet 1, it's partly because you outplayed your opponents. Yeah. Like your whole group worked together, you had the best fleet commanders, you mm -hmm. had the best tactics, but also you executed on your part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good feeling. Yeah, yeah. I've mm -hmm. certainly uh, had much sweatier palms when everyone's relying on me. <laughs> get that special warp in or, or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So now you can just blame the fleet members if they, mm -hmm. if they warp to a... Yeah. Sure, you can give that yeah. one a <laughs> When they warp into this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool. So uh, that's uh, some of the changes that are coming in July. Obviously a very exciting month uh, mm -hmm. with soft changes coming. The war games happening on July uh, next week. Yeah. And uh, so looking forward to... Oh, so are we. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we're definitely looking for feedback on all these changes. There's going to be a dev blog coming out later. There's going to be forum posts for all of these balance changes with details. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and we really want to hear from you and have people test it as well on uh, Sissy and let us know what you think. Okay, so keep mm -hmm. the feedback coming. Try it out and tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now we are going to go to something different. Uh, everybody has been waiting uh, excitedly for the rematch between Manfred Sirius and Lazarus Telraven, the two generals of the Battle of Bitakar, which took place on January 27, 2014, on the anniversary of the Battle of Asakai. And uh, the Bitakar battle uh, resulted in destruction uh, of something like $300,000 in plaques value over the course of 21 hours. And these guys led these armies. They have agreed. We managed to get them to meet and fight with no armies to back them up. And of course, this is celebrity shootout, so they get a random selection of ships. In this case, they got four faction cruisers, one from each race, and a big pile of modules to quickly pick through because they only get two minutes to fit. You're gonna hear them and see them fit their ships. They can't hear each other while they fit, but uh, after that, it's everything goes. So check that out. We're all very excited to uh, see how that goes. <laughs> Mm. 
Welcome to the sequel to the bloodbath of BTEC R. Uh, Lass has promised us that this, this time it will go no different, and Manny has promised us that this, this will be the most exciting fight of the year featuring anybody named Manny. Are you guys ready? We're ready. I'm ready to go. Ready for some vengeance. So let's start fitting right now. You have two minutes. Wow, yeah, so many ship selections. Easier, uh, I'm, I've got a Caracol Navy issue, and I'm and going to assemble the ship and get into it so as quickly as possible. Uh, it's, a, it's a missile ship, so I'm going to quickly look for oh, some missile go. launchers, items. Uh, we're gonna some be damage going mods, some... Uh, uh, so we're going to get into our items here, go bulkheads. Uh, we and do have some here, so we're gonna open uh, up our tab, ballistic control units, maybe some shield extenders. I don't know which ones are better. This is I'm not finally good. to the missile launchers. I don't have time for this. I'm gonna so fit. We're just gonna attack one. Heavy damage assault control. launchers. Never not damage control. Next, I'm gonna go to and then we're shield going to extenders. Let's go down to the bottom. Let's try to slap as much buffer on this as possible. I think shield should be at the bottom. Yes, large shield extender. Let's put a few of those on it. Antimatter. He heck, let's just put a bunch of them. <laughs> One minute. Let's put an invol. Let's put an enam. Oh, yeah. Let's get some. Warriors. Let's get some ballistic DPS. control units on it. Let's go to ammunition. Let's get some missiles real quick. 30 seconds. We got to find missiles fast, boys. Okay, Otherwise, this go. is all for nothing. Oh, God. Missiles fast. OK, scourge, heavy assault. Yeah, let's grab some of those. Let's grab some. 15 uh, seconds. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, six 5, 4. four. Three, two, one. Undock <laughs> now. Undock now, guys. Undock now. Press the undock button. In whatever, in whatever you shape your ships are. <laughs> no. All right. We have given these pilots a choice of four different Navy cruisers, uh, one from each of the factions, and we're going to see which one they've chosen in just a second. Docking. There we go. We have Lazarus Tell Riven, an Executor Navy issue, Manfred Sidious, and a Caracal Navy issue. Uh, Very interesting. Executor Navy, known for a lot of damage, uh, not great tracking, but huge damage potential and a lot of hull. Uh, the Caracal Navy issue, uh, great missile spammer, uh, it, good strong shield tank. Mm -hmm. We're already seeing damage uh, coming across the field, uh, very uh, about to, uh, as we see missiles coming oh, from yeah. uh, the Caracal. All right, so now already the Executor Navy issue of Laz into about half shields, <laughs> dropping quickly. Wow. Of course, it's unlikely to be shield tank. It's a, a ship with more armor and hull than shield. And uh, Manny is uh, holding up okay, but of course his ship is going to be shield tank most likely. Uh, yes, we do see uh, oh, shield man. hardener effects. That's a so lot of damage. Once that Caracal goes through shield, it's going to disappear really quickly. And there's a ton of damage wow. potential from the Executor Navy issue. A lot of damage being, being applied on both mm -hmm. sides. So the Caracal, of course, was able to get that damage applied earlier. Already the Executor Navy into hull, but he's not going into hull very quickly. He is very slowly dropping down. That means this is a hull tank, the Executor oh. Navy issue, which is my <laughs> personal favorite fit for wow. the Executor Navy. Very interesting. a great fit for it. And this is a really question. Can Laz take Manny through his shields before he runs out? Out of uh, hull. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, but uh, oh. Manny is dropping oh, through his shields <laughs> fast. Come on, Lance. <laughs> the executor is, is an amazing oh, drawer. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. We're so oh. close. Still half structure. Oh. Now we'll see if Manny has a uh, damage to throw himself. If he can get these last few volleys in, maybe pull a bit of range, but it looks like oh. no. Oh. There we go. So wow. Lazarus Tell Raven <laughs> in about one third structure oh. wins this battle in his executor Navy issue. Uh, high damage wow. blast. Mastership, uh, and uh, that is a uh, great match there. Congratulations to both of our contestants, and a special congratulations to Lazarus Tellraven, our newest celebrity shootout champion. Yeah, very well, well fought on both sides. I, mm -hmm. I have to have to say, obviously strong ships and uh, a good showing. Yeah, um, amazing showing from both pilots. Uh, two very gorgeous ships, two recently uh, redesigned ships, and there's the fire coming out the back of that Executor <laughs> Navy issue. But that's the way Executor Navy oh. issues like to uh, be flying. It's but it's fresh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honor tanks. So, yeah. uh, thank you guys for coming on. I hope you uh, had fun. Yeah, it was a blast. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. I was a little worried there with the early <laughs> game for the missiles. <laughs>
And uh, we'll see you uh, back on the 07 show. Enjoyed that, but uh, it's time to announce the draw results for Alliance Tournament. So, um, hi, uh, my mic was muted, so I'm back. Um, that was a good fight, and now we're gonna go to the uh, result uh, of the random draw for Alliance Tournament 13. So, how this works is that there's gonna be 64 teams in the tournament, uh, we had almost 80 applications. Uh, we're going to draw 48 uh, teams now, 12 of the 16 from the top 16 last year used their option to buy in and then there's going to be a silent auction uh, starting tomorrow for four teams. So there's going to be news uh, on that tomorrow. But uh, now we're going to go to CCP Lotsi Bro, who is going to announce the results of the draw to see if uh, your alliance made it in. I'm just going to drum roll this in, I'm a really bad drummer so excuse me. Hello, I am CCP Logibro, Tournament Director, and these are the teams that have been selected in the random draw for Alliance Tournament 13. They are, in order, Black Legion, The Godfathers, Clockwork Pineapple, Castabouts, Scary Wormhole People, Brave Collective, Hard Knock Citizens, The Methodical Alliance, Triumvirate, Northern Coalition, Circle of Two, Dead Terrorists, Out of Sight, Vox Populi, Forsaken Federation, Together We Solo, Curatorus Veritatis Alliance, Neil Hillis Social Club, Razor Alliance, Project Mayhem, Gone Critical, Revolution, 404 Alliance Not Found, Alternate Allegiance, The Bastards, Brothers in Arms Alliance, Confederation of XX Pizza XX, Dreamfleet, Verge of Collapse, The Explicit Alliance, Easily Excited, The Gorgon Empire plus The Gorgon Spawn, Chaos Collective, Phoebe Freeport Republic, A Band Apart, Warlords of the Deep, Nerfed Alliance Go Away, Pandemic Horde, Waffles, Affirmative, Suddenly Spaceships, Drop the Hammer, It Must Be Jelly Cause Jam Don't Shake, End of Life, Quebec United Legions, The Kadeshi, That Escalated Quickly, and Space Monkeys Alliance. Welcome back. Uh, congratulations to everyone who made it in. It's gonna be a pretty uh, fantastic tournament and we can't wait to show it to you. Um, I'm gonna, I have, uh, we're gonna go on a roam, but I first wanna announce the commentators for uh, this year's Alliance tournament. We got a lot of really good applications, but the four that we have chosen are Sir Squeeples, Apothne, Elise Randolph, and Cheser. Congratulations, everyone else, you put in fantastic applications. We could have run a great tournament with any one of you. Uh, mm -hmm. But now we're going to go and kick some ass. We're going to do our best at least. Yes. All right. We're going to go ahead and decloak now. Uh, let's just head to the closest uh, plex to us. Okay. Uh, Larrikin. The large think? one. So where? Uh, there's a small one I'm seeing, a 2.7. Yeah, that sounds good. What are we flying today, gentlemen? We're flying some typhoons. This oh, is the fit from Does It Fit Today. Oh. Uh, and if we die, this is mainly uh, CCP Rises' fault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's why we chose it. We uh, <laughs> we could have chosen the exec or navy issues and blamed uh, Laz, yeah. but yeah. Uh, blaming Rise is more fun. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Always, it's always a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Also, I have Twitch chat here in front of me, so if any of you guys uh, have any specific questions for these gentlemen here? We'll, we'll try to pick a few uh, during the uh, lulls when everybody dies and all that stuff. So, all right. When everybody so. else no, dies, faith. when everybody yeah. else dies, you can do it. Come on. CCB Rice has promised us that this mm -hmm. is. Uh, uh, this is the one. This shit. is the time you. I'm going to screen for this. you, Larkin. Oh, thanks, man. That's really <laughs> generous of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's pineapple. Got a slicer of pineapple. Uh, I actually really want to kill that carries. Hyper yeah. Snappy's carries. Let's uh, see if we can make him dead. Uh, there we are. Oh no, I lost sex status. Oh no. <laughs> CCP Fossey is a dirty a pirate. pirate Fossey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Nihilist and a Nitron's yep, going in. Yep, he's uh, got tackle on me, but I'll have... Uh, I'll have a uh, nude on him in a second. Yeah. Your safety zone. All right, the, uh, anyway. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That'll do it. All right, I'm going to take him down the Atron here. Yeah, uh, I'm taking on him too. Yeah, All right, so gotta... we've got the slasher of uh, Odeva's also mm -hmm, close. Mm -hmm. Oh, get them, get them, anyone, get them. Does anyone have tackle on you right now? Uh, yeah, Matthew just got tackle on me. What are you doing, Matthew? Yeah. Matthew. 
Don't kill Larrikin. All right, so... Gonna so if you have any time, Max wants to know what the new missile modules are going to do. We'll try to find time to ask, uh, answer yeah. something on that. So these, these are pretty exciting modules. I'm being jammed by uh, Hamo and Gorski. Gorski? Gorski. Oh. Gorski, come on, man. I'm going to die before he started Jeez. jamming us. Where's right. Capcom? Battlecruiser change is cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is... Um, yeah. That's just me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So wow. the, the new missile modules, they're going to mm -hmm. be able to enhance your range and damage application. Uh, so very similar to the current tracking. What, jammed as well? What is going <laughs> on? Oh. Mr. 556 wants you see to marry I'm overpowered. Me. Well, Aww. you know, I'm, mm -hmm. that's very I'm taken, nice. but, you know, it's a nice offer. Maybe, <laughs> maybe later. Mm -hmm. All right. More clicking. I might be able to get out of this jam. Mm-hmm. So what are the new modules going to do? So they're yeah. going to uh, increase your missile range. Uh, it looks. I think at the moment we're planning on having them affect both flight time and velocity a little bit, uh, and then uh, increase your uh, damage application with missiles, which will actually affect both uh, missile explosion velocity and explosion radius. And I should turn on my repper. Uh, do that. Do that. That's probably yes. a good idea. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. damage controls. I think I understand that. Damage controls useful. are a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, meanwhile, I still actually can't lock anything, but uh, I'm actually I tanking can. pretty well. Cause what, there are calls um, for nerfing Fossey. If you can kill either the Griffin <laughs> or the Kitsune, so Gorski or Hamo, uh, those, that would be I, awesome. You know, Fuzzy, you seem like a really mm -hmm. nice guy, and I've really enjoyed working with you, but I am not going to come and help you. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> you're going to coward. Right? Wait, I, I am, nope. I think Good luck, uh, friends. Fossey is just on Gorski, his way to clear out the system. No! Jammed again. Oh, 35 seconds left. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. The good news is they're actually killing me very slowly. Yeah, you know, this is yeah. kind of something. Mm -hmm. Large ARs. Um, so yeah, the, the, I think that explained the missile tracking. There's going to yeah. be a, a mid-slot mm -hmm. one and a low-slot one. Again. They kind of work a lot, they work very similarly to the ones you use for guns. Yeah. Someone is asking if other modules are going to be changed. I'm assuming they're talking about other uh, missiles effect, missile affecting Well, modules. they might be talking about module tier side. Yep. Yeah. And, and there is more changes for that coming, actually. Yes, yes. Um, there's going to be some more information on that soon. And I'm about to enter structure and I still can't lock anything. Um, so uh, <laughs> they're they're calling for a, an ECM nerf. I think somebody is trying to make a point there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, every Maybe. time we do this, I keep wanting to nerf ECM. I don't know why. <laughs> or ask Rise to fit an ECM. I think they call it activism. Yeah, Rise needs to put an ECM on his ships. Or do you know what we should do? Um, the celebrity shootout and give them nothing but ECM to fit. Oh, oh that would be the best. <laughs> well, you know, actually, I don't know because Rise fit e, uh, ECM at the Eve Down Under mm -hmm. last year too. <laughs> he had four. Oh. That didn't go very so well. Fossey, where are all your quickly. modules? Uh, my modules are gone because yeah. I'm dead, and there we go. Yeah. I've explodified. Oh. Yeah. Fossey is gone, mm -hmm. only Larrikin remains. Yeah, so Larrikin's yeah. in there, and he's going to uh, power this through it. Of, uh, Montal. So it's, mm -hmm. Now it's up to Larrikin to clean out the system. Yeah, I've got this, guys. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> He'll take them all down. Yeah. Yeah. So Fossey mm -hmm. can probably take some questions yeah, while, uh, he, since he's, he's dead. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything good you guys want to know? Um, so yeah, I mean, to finish answering the last question, um, I, I don't think we're ready to reveal exactly which modules are coming up next for the um, yeah. module tier side, but there is more coming very soon. Somebody's uh, asking about an assault frigate rebalance, anything? Yeah, so assault frigates are that? definitely one of the ship classes that is in need of a rebalance. Um, it's been one that we've kind of wanted to do for a while, it definitely is, is coming, I can't yeah. say exactly when. Um, they were actually last rebalanced before we started the whole tier side, kind of more modern balance pass, so it's yeah. been a while since they've been touched. Yeah. Uh, them and uh, logistic ships and Black Ops are all uh, ships that are high on the list for yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, classes absolutely. that could use a polish. Yes, uh, yes. Lodgy ships probably need uh, smaller oh. changes than those other ones, oh, but uh, yeah. Wow. Lodgy ships more. also need skins, but uh, I know we're working, we've are working. we got the hard working people of Team Size Matters uh, on that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was a good question here about like, uh, are missiles going to be nerfed with these new modules uh, giving, giving players? Uh, we're not intending on doing anything yet. In fact, we're buffing the heavy missile damage. Yeah. So I heard. Um, which so I, heard. I would love right yeah. now. And uh, except <laughs> I yeah, these are going to be 5%. These, wow. these um, uh, typhoons could have, I could have killed that uh, comet. That comet I got into structure probably would have died if I had 5% more damage. That's goodness. actually why we're doing this. Um, but no, yes. the, in this, this, this set of changes, um, we don't plan on any, any missile nerfs right in them, although we'll of course be watching how uh, missile usage changes. Yeah. If anything gets out of control, becomes too oppressive, then we'll be ready to change. Mm -hmm. That's the nice thing about the fast um, release cycle. We can respond to stuff yeah. quickly. So if all of a sudden rapid heavy missiles, for instance, become too oppressive uh, after these changes, then we can of course do a specific change on those quickly as needed. Any plan to, uh, ch any plan to uh, touch missile skills? 
Um, Someone asked about that. In these changes, we don't have any plans. To okay. Do, no. Okay. So they will remain the same for mm -hmm. now. Yeah. For now. Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and reveal one more uh, thing that we are changing with missiles. Um, <gasps> that uh, Bonus points. We're going to be uh, making some balance changes around firewalling tactics. Oh. Yeah. So uh, yeah. firewalls yeah. is a tactic that's a, a really cool one, actually. It was one created by players, entirely unintended by CCP, but it was a really clever uh, mm -hmm. tactic. I think it was Initiative that first came up with the idea. Um, at least they're the first ones that I ever saw using it before I came to CCP. Mm -hmm. um, and then a bunch of NullSec groups have worked really hard on it uh, since and perfected it. Um, but uh, it's one that at the moment is both a little bit too strong against yeah. missile setups, yeah. and also there's not a ton of counterplay available. Um, okay. So what we're going to be doing is making some changes that will include increasing the hit points of missiles, okay. also chain making the... Uh, the hit points between different missile uh, sizes are different, and okay. also between different missile meta levels. We'll have more detail about that. Okay. And um, then another uh, special trick is we're going to be uh, giving missiles uh, a special resistance bonus to their own damage type. So you'll be able to actually plan, oh. see what um, uh, smart bomb types your opponent is using and okay. try to work around that. There'll be a little bit of counterplay involved. Okay, so we're okay, hoping okay. that'll create some more exciting opportunities for okay, fleets. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good uh, for quick thinking uh, mm -hmm. fighters. Hmm. All right, so. How's this going? Are I've you? got this in the bag. Yeah, I mean, you got I'm the 83, <laughs> 80, 68, 65% yeah. structure, but yeah. I'm pretty confident about yeah. this. Yeah. Bunch of structure, bunch yeah. of structure. No <laughs> need to go into details about that. It's structure just... tank typhoons are yeah. amazing, as yeah. we saw at World's yeah, Collide. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Someone I, is asking you to ungroup your launchers. Yeah, I was actually, I can't remember how. Uh, it's uh, because of the stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And also, these, these screens are tiny. It's, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's yeah. a great excuse as well. Oh, no. Uh, so uh, you are now uh, in nope. the afterlife. Nope, I didn't even get away. Yeah, so there is now one extra Fozzie corpse and one extra Larrikin corpse. Is this going to be the first Larrikin corpse? Larrican the first ever Larrikin corpse. Yeah. You need to all kill each other for that corpse, because that yeah. thing is going to be priceless. Not that we would ever... <laughs> Like, that's the only time I'll ever in die. Game. Not the oh, only yeah. time I'll ever die. Un <laughs> undoubtedly. Yeah. Well, so, uh, I remember saying that once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... This is it for tonight. I know there's a lot of questions, but just go to the forums, uh, keep those questions coming. Uh, these guys will be monitoring them uh, day and night, no sleeping for you. So, uh, We've got some feedback threads coming for a yeah, lot of these yeah, changes. Yeah, a lot of yeah. things. So plenty of, uh, plenty of chance to ask. Uh, also, if you want to ask completely random questions, we have all the Twitter accounts and stuff, so it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's all good. But that's it for tonight. The next 07 show is going to be on July 11th. And uh, so until then, I hope you conquer a lot of space. Uh, for your friends and yourself. And while you are, please send us anything that you want us to give a shout out on the 07 show to share at eveonline.com. I saw that people were asking yeah. that in Twitch chat mm -hmm. earlier, yeah. so that's where it goes. Share, share. at eveonline.com. Uh, exactly. We'll be looking for cool stuff uh, that you guys make. You make so much cool stuff. But we're out. Uh, just remember that there's one ship in Eve Online that you should uh, always fly, uh, even though you really can't afford to lose it. Structure tank typhoons. <laughs> the friendship. <laughs> but oh, sorry. Also the, typhoon yeah. is also good. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep those friendships flying around and those typhoons, and we'll see you later on uh, the 07 and in space.